Hey guys, welcome to the shop. Now, this week I've got some... Several... <laughs> I've got several things this week. I've been unreal busy. I want to share them with you, so let's go in the shop and get started. Alright guys, I just want to show you this real quick. Uh, we're not going to be working on this, but this is what I've been doing this morning. Ugh, I hate mechanic work. I've done it my entire adult life, and I am done with it. I had to put a timing uh, belt set in this, you know, the typical timing belt, idlers, uh, tensioner, serpentine belts, all the good stuff. This thing had a water pump go bad, and the water pump is driven by the timing belt, which is a horrible thing if you ask me. Let me bring you in and show you. All right, now I've got this thing completely tore down. The whole front of the engine has to come off, the radiator, all that good stuff to put a timing belt on this thing. And here's the old pump. Now, like I said, I've already put one in this once. Um, and these cheap parts, you know, they're just garbage. And luckily, this thing didn't go out bad enough for the timing belt to break. <laughs> if the timing belt breaks on this engine, it's an interference engine which means that the valves and pistons can collide if it gets out of time. And this being a multi-valve engine <laughs> means it's junk if that happens. So this is a stressful one. And it's not an easy one if you ask me. Some guys probably could fly through it. But, you know, it takes me... It would take me a day to do this. And uh, it's brought blood on me more than once today. So that's my morning. Let's go in the shop and uh, do something fun. All right, guys, now i got several things we're going to attempt to do today. I don't know how far we'll get, but we'll get as far as we can. We're going to be using the shaper to finish up, hopefully, the faceplate for this indexing angle plate. we got to square this plate up. I'm going to be using the compound feeding down my hand, side cutting. We're also going to try to get out a really mangled little bolt out of this item here. And I've got a little method that I'm going to try. I don't know if it'll work or not, but it's interesting nonetheless. When we try to locate these bolt holes, now these are existing, and I didn't put these in here. We're going to use a alternative method, you know, just for fun. So, let's get started. Alright, here's a little look at the tool we're going to be using in the shaper. And nothing special, just a roughing tool. We got a uh, 16th of an inch radius on the end here. We're going to be feeding down with the compound, side cutting with this thing, so it'll be clocked over a bit. Should be neat. I've honed the edge. It's pretty sharp. This is a piece of Cobra by Ludlow Steel Corporation. So I've never tried this steel before. I figured I'd grind one up and give it a shot. So that'll be interesting. Let's go over the shaper and get set up. All right, here is the plate that I'm going to be cutting that goes on the front of our in indexing angle plate. And I've already trued a couple sides on it. I did that a couple weeks ago. So I want to make this side here, which I saw cut, and this front. I want to make this parallel with this surface, and this surface parallel with this surface, and then square to each other. So I've got my 196, which I really like for the shaper, uh, set up here. And I've got my little attachment on here where I can get it to clearance down here, because the 196 won't fit on this edge without hitting. So we put our little attachment on here. I'll bring you around. We'll run uh, up and down this surface. We'll tap it in, tighten it down. Then we'll come over and cut uh, vertically this surface here using the compound feeding by hand. Now, I've already checked and made sure that this compound is moving, you know, uh, vertical. <laughs> true, anyway. True vertical. And I did that just by Sticking my mag base with tense indicator and stare it parallel or stare it uh, uh, machinist square on the table. So it's referencing off the table. That gives me a vertical line that is true. I just brought my uh, tense indicator over onto the blade of the square and ran by hand the compound up and down because if it's not true I will get an angle on the surface. I don't want that. I want the surface to be square to the front. Not that it really matters that much but it, I want it close so within a within a half a thousandth but we should be within a tenth or so. So that's the idea. So let's get this shaper fired up and uh, 
get this dialed in. It's about nine and a half inches long. And I don't want my indicator running off of the ends. So I need to set my stroke up for indicating this end shorter than nine and a half inches. So I'm going to set it up at about nine. Consistent reading. I'll be refinishing this anyway, so it doesn't necessarily matter. But I want it to be close. I think that's pretty good. Within a thousand. Within reason, it's within a thousandth on uh, of parallel and you know, really square. And before we go drilling holes and and uh, changing my mill setup, I'm already set up to uh, to work on this and get this little bolt out. Let me bring you in and show you what we're going to be doing. You can see that little bolt is chowdered all up. Uh, this was brought to me. Um, by someone and they wanted me to try to get this out. Now this is stainless steel and it's taken apart. This thing is relatively flat uh, so it's easy, pretty easy to clamp down. It's got a couple of little protrusions here that we're going to have to account for when we mount this on the mill table and what I plan to do is take an end mill and come in here and redefine this slot. I've got a little uh, end mill that I'm going to run along here and give me some good square edges. Because they tried so much to get this out unsuccessfully, chances are they used the wrong screwdriver to begin with and, you know, completely made it to where, completely made it all, you know, messed up to where it's going to be hard for anybody to get out. But we're going to try. Um, I think I can do it. Uh, I'm going to, like I said, redefine that slot. And I made a little uh, bit here. Let me see if I can get you a little better shot of that. Now this is just a hand formed bit that uh, I basically turned into a drill point almost. I worked it on the angle grinder or on the bench grinder and then worked these tops with a diamond file to get them to where once I get this slot defined I can push this into the slot with some downward pressure and when I turn it the way that I've ground it should bite into the screw and hopefully it'll pull down into the screw more and back it out. That's the plan anyway so we're gonna try that. Let's go set this up on the mill and uh, see if our plan works. Alright I got a piece of aluminum here and a couple pieces of brass to raise or to, to put under my clamp 
and my little hole here that I drilled is just for clearance for my two little protrusions that I showed you. And it'll go in there like that. And then the clamp comes down. I don't want to mess this thing up any more than it is. And then I can come in and clamp this guy down. Got my little end mill here. Let me bring it in a little closer. My little end mill. And uh, I'm just going to try to, by eye, line this back up with the somewhat existing slot and I'm going to run this end mill back and forth just to give me some square edges. That's the plan. I hope it works. But uh, I mean I can't mess this screw up really any more than it already is. So I'm going to get set up and I'll bring you back when we're cutting. Well I think that I've got it to where I can run back and forth of this in this what used to be a screw slot. I'm not going to use any lubricant or anything. I'm just going to go real slow and I'm not going to cut any deeper than I have to and I'm going to try to stay away from the edges because I don't want to chew this thing up. Alright, hopefully you can see that. We got uh, our little groove machined out and this fits both length and width in the little groove that we made fairly well. So I think I'm just going to try this on the bench. I think I'm going to just put it in the screwdriver and press down real hard on it and try to turn it. Um, I kind of want to put this in the press and press down on it. You know, have the press sandwich it to hold this bit firmly down in the slot while I come in with a little wrench and try to turn this. But I'm going to first try just with my hand. Let's see if I can mess up everything I did real quick and then have to come up with another plan by trying to make a take a shortcut. So I'm just going to lean on this with basically all my weight and try to turn it. <clears throat> well, we turned it a little so we know that if we're careful, we can get this out. Unless the head's just twisting off, I don't know. It's shutting. <clears throat> and that's in there good. I'm going to have to think of something else some other way to hold it. Well, I've changed my setup here. Now I'm in the mill again. And I've got just, in the quill I've got a carbide blank, just a flat 3 8 carbide blank. I've clamped my part back down and I've got my bed here. And I'm going to come in and use the mill actually, the quill of the mill, as a press to apply my downward force and then I'm going to use a wrench. I was going to do this over in the hydraulic press, but um, it's hard to tell how hard you're pressing against the screw. And of course, this screw is going to want to back out, hopefully, when uh, it starts turning. I want to be able to, to feel that. So that's the idea. Let me see if I can get you in a little tighter. Let's hope this works. I'm going to be hopefully turning. It's kind of hard to make sure you turn, you know, straight when you have a one-handled deal. So I'm going to try just pressing. I've got downward pressure with my one hand, and and I'm going to be turning with my other. Man, that's in there tight. It has turned a little, but. It is not broke loose yet. I think it is. Just barely. Oh. There it went. It broke free. Well, 
unfortunately that snap that we heard was the head of the bolt shearing off but I think uh, I think we're still good we can get in here now and and we can get a hold of it a little keeper there so yeah nothing ever works the way you you plan you can hope but it almost never uh, goes super smooth You know why that wouldn't come out? Because it's a left-handed screw. <laughs> a lesson within a lesson. I would have never have thought that that would have been a left-handed screw. I mean, how many times do you run into a left-handed screw? And I guess, <clears throat> you know, where I'm not a smith, um, you run into this stuff maybe more common there. But uh, this worked just fine. It actually worked so good it stripped the head of the bolt off but that's just because we was tightening the crap out of it <laughs> but it come off we got it successfully the hammer changed um, I'll have to get uh, this guy to order a new bolt which the bolt was done anyway or the screw was done anyway so lesson learned um, everybody can goof and I'm definitely not immune to it but mission accomplished hammer changed and uh, maybe I'll be wiser next time well now I want to mount my faceplate to the front of this and I have four holes that I want to use here and I measure, I've measured them and they're equally spaced and seem to be fairly good. Uh, a couple of them seem to be a little crooked but I didn't drill these holes. They were already in, in the slug when I machined it. And what I'm going to use is these transfer studs. Now I'll screw these into these holes here, all four. And these just have a little sharp point on the end of them. I have a set of these and most are common sizes. I've got a 5 16 dowel pin here. So I'm going to drill and ream. Well, it's already drilled. But I'm going to ream this hole out to accept this pin. Then I'm going to center punch this plate. I've got it laid out here. Drill it and ream it to also have a, you know, just a slight interference fit. I'm going to basically ream at 5 16 it's what I've got. And that'll be my alignment pin. Then I can set my plate with the pin, holding everything true. And uh, I'll have this slug lined up, these parallel with the sides, hopefully. And then I'll just tap on it, and it'll transfer my little center punches. I'll drill it, and then I'll countersink for my hardware. I've got 82 degree headed hardware, and uh, I hope it works. Uh, I'm not for sure, but we'll see. Let me show you a quick method to determine the center distance between two holes. Alright, so I want to find the distance between these two holes, or the center of each of these holes. So I'm just going to measure the major, just the biggest number that I get, which is 2.504. Then I'm going to come in, I'm going to measure one hole, and it is 0.424. So this 2.504, 2.504, yeah, 2 I'm going to zero it and then I'm going to subtract, what was it, 4.424, I think that's what it was. Okay, and, and zero, and then there's our distance, 2.080. So we come back to zero. Basically, and there is our center. Our center distance between this one and this one is basically 2.080. 080. That was quick and rough, but you get the idea. Major minus one full uh, width of the inside, and that'll give you basically from center to center. It's quick and dirty, but it's, you know, if you're doing rough work, that'll get you, you know, in the ballpark. I'm going to be using a straight shanked uh, chucking reamer, similar to this. 
and I'm going to be using a in stainless steel so I'm going to use it says that I can use either a soluble oil or a sulfurized oil well I have a I have both I'm going to use the sulfurized oil I'm just going to run it slow and hopefully this 5 16 reamer will allow me to slide in this pin you know, even if I have to slightly push it in I'm fine with that it's a through hole so I can knock it back out I'm going to do the same thing on the steel plate and for steel or yeah steel it's the same thing sulfurized oil or soluble oil so we're going to we're going to do it all right so we're over here in the mill and this hole here is a little larger than what I'd like it to be um, really it's only allowing me you know probably three or four thousandths to take off with this reamer probably more like three thousandths um, chip formation uh, and when you're reaming a hole from what I read now I am NOT a reaming expert I will readily admit that I've done very little of it but if a hole is, doesn't have enough material to remove a reamer can actually burnish the hole polish the inside instead of taking a chip it kind of just forces the metal out of the way it can damage the reamer all sorts of weird stuff and people wonder why they don't have you know good success with this kind of stuff well it's usually all the little things from my experience and I'm usually that guy wondering you know well I reamed it with this reamer why do I have a bigger hole or a smaller hole well chances are you know it's the hole size you drilled before and a hundred other issues the material the speeds the feeds you uh, whatever you know this is just uh, well this is sulfurized oil it's about as slow as this mill will run I'm not even going to clamp the part down just going to let it line itself because we're not really taking off much material and let it float I'm just barely feeding down the hand right, it's good enough stare at center punch. It was dull and sharpened it up. I'm gonna use it. So I drilled this and reamed it. You've seen it. And I tapped, just had to lightly tap this uh, 5 16 pin in uh, with this little brass hammer. And it went in fairly easy, but uh, it's a good interference fit. Now this one, I don't know why, but it turned out just a little bigger than this one, the whole size. I can, this pin will, I can put it in and take it out by hand. It's just a slip fit. Difference in material, you know, difference in uh, material removed by the reamer. This hole was uh, larger than this one to begin with. I don't know, uh, you know, I didn't drill this hole uh, originally, so I only had to remove about, I think, four thousandths with this one. And in this hole, uh, with my drill, I drilled it with a number U drill, so I removed about, what, 10, 12 thousandths, somewhere right around there. So it worked out in the end. The only thing that I want to make sure is that 
my whole the sides of my bolts here are parallel with the sides and that's just for looks i don't want it to look all crazy you know, i don't want the bolts to be all crooked you know when this thing is up and down but i'll just slide this over here and the pin will slide into the hole of the, sl of the slug here now all i got to do is line it up tap it that'll transfer my punch marks and then i'll drill it and counterbore it or countersink it. Well, I want to align these bolt holes up with the edges of the plate that we're going to mount to it. I just, for cosmetic reasons really on, only, uh, I think it would look kind of goofy if uh, <laughs> your bolt holes are all skewed, uh, you know, in relation to the sides. So, I did a uh, overly complicated setup here. I put the uh, rotary table on the mill. I'm going to take a couple of my hardware, a couple of my bolts that I'm going to use to mount that plate to the front of this slug and I put them in here. Took my 12 inch brown and sharp parallel and I set it up against those bolts. Come in with my indicol and my test indicator. Brought it up against the edge and ran back and forth adjusting the uh, rotary table until I got basically a zero reading. Then we're going to take our transfer studs, put them back in, I cut my finger really good, really bad, with a chainsaw. Uh, of course the chainsaw wasn't running, I was sharpening uh, the blade of my chainsaw. Me and my dad cut six loads of wood, cut and loaded six huge truckloads of wood. I'll put in a picture in um, two days. And uh, it was a lot of work, but I'm glad to have the wood for the winter. <laughs> now, uh, got uh, my stud or my pin, my dowel pin that we placed in our plate. Then I line it in the hole. And now I'll come back with my test indicator. Run back and forth just like I did on the parallel. And until I get a basically a zero reading, then I'll come in, tap this plate with this little dead blow, transfer my punch marks, then we will center drill it, pilot drill it, and countersink it. And hopefully. We've got our marks, so that's good. All right, here's a little closer look at our punch marks. And you may not be able to see them, but I can see them pretty well. These are the ones that I'm, you know, familiar with using, the transfer punches. And uh, I really think that these have an advantage over this type here. Uh, this type here, you just, you know, this is actually a wrench also. You just screw it into your hole. But if you don't, if you're doing multiples like we did, we did four punch marks at one time. You have to make sure that these are, you know, close to the same depth or else you may get punch marks to transfer on one and not the other. With this type, now all I've got is imperial uh, coarse thread. Uh, the, you just screw these in till they stop, you know, till they rest up against the shoulder. And, you know, that gets all your punches at the same height, which is, is good. And it allows us to not miss any, so... Just a little closer look. I think a uh, person, if they was inclined to, could actually make these um, just out of a grade 8 bolt. But there you go, a little closer look. First time I ever used them.
so we got uh, our first hole drilled and to clearance size we've got our 82 degree uh, countersink in order to match the head of this bolt and I'm not going to be feeding down with a quill uh, this countersink I'm going to be feeding up with the table that way I can get each of these set to a specific depth uh, I've set my quill here my quill lock to where I can after I go and drill to a certain depth this will just be for my for my first one really drill to what I think is a you know slightly shy of what I'm looking for then I can because I'm locked here I can get this up out of the way I can test fit it and I can come back, set it back on my lock, and continue to feed up with the table. That's the idea anyway. Hopefully it'll work. Um, I don't use these a lot, so this is kind of a you know learning experience for me. Alright. Wrong way. Bring it down to our stop hits. I'm going to bring the table up until it starts cutting. And call that zero. And I'm just going to feed up the table. Lock everything. Anyway. 
the moment of truth. Deeper the back of these holes. Better. These are really nice and handy for quick deburring. I need to knock out my alignment pin. For that, I'm going to need a hammer. Punch. That looks pretty good. You know, we still haven't got all of our holes in here yet, and no reason for you to watch me drill an array of bolt holes and tap them, because that's all I'm going to do. Bring it up here. Let me get you a better angle. All right. Good so far. Always the uh, you know the stress that doesn't really fit. Looks good to me. Make sure that all these are below the surface, and I'll just you know I'll probably come in and grind this anyway one day when I when I get a uh, surface grinder, but whatever that looks pretty good get our holes in it and mount it to the actual unit look at your back indexing angle plate once we get it all together and get it uh, to where we can use it we'll have to do a project with it that's awesome and you can't beat that you know and now you know my holes look like they're in line with the side and that's all I care is if it you know looks like it is and it is really within reason so very good and I'm happy with that Sweet. This is running long, this video. Well, I'm glad to get this to this point. I'm really happy with the way it's turned out so far, and it's actually usable. I can drill holes anywhere in this plate. This is pretty much sacrificial, and mount my work to it and perform whatever operation I need to perform. We can rotate it 360 degrees, and with our indexing ring that we made all this on video, uh, and our vernier scale, we can possibly get to a quarter of a degree of accuracy. So that's pretty good. And it's a good size, I think, you know. Uh, and the rotating uh, um, option is, is excellent. Never seen one before. On our little uh, adventure uh, at the beginning of this video, when we tried to get the uh, screw, the left-handed screw out, uh, to the guys who knew that was a left-handed screw and was screaming at the screen, you know, stop you goof, that's a left-handed screw. <laughs> Thumbs up to you. But to the majority of folks who were right along with me and thinking, man, that screw's tight, you know, it happens. Uh, I'm sure I'm the only person who's ever done that to a left-handed screw. So thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. If you haven't, make sure to subscribe to the channel by clicking on my little guy up here and hit the bell for notifications. And as always, I'll see you next time.